All right, now we're in ready to do that uh, repair on that power supply board. Um, to do the repair, um, you're going to need desolder wick, lead free solder, uh, diagonal cutter for wire cutters, soldering iron, and then the capacitor kit of the capacitors that we're going to be replacing on the board. Um, first thing you need to do, of course, is remove the defective capacitors off of the board. Uh, you do that with your soldering iron and your desolder wick. The way you do that is you take your desoldering or your soldering iron and your desolder wick. You put the wick on top of one of the um, legs of the capacitor. The soldering iron melts the solder and the solder is absorbed up into the wick, leaving a free capacitor leg so that you, it can be removed from the board. Now, some people do it one way, some people do it the other. I'll show you both ways how to do it. Um, you can either, like I say, uh, remove the solder like we're doing here to free up the capacitor. And then it leaves the nice clean holes to install your new capacitors in. All right, I should have a free capacitor here. And then it just comes off of the board to pull those legs up through the board and there's the bad capacitor. Uh, the other way some people prefer to do is if you grab a hold of the capacitor on the back side of the board, you heat up one leg, melt the solder, and then you kind of tilt the capacitor and it pulls its leg through the board. Then you tilt the other side and it pulls that leg through the board until you just work your capacitor right off the board. Then you have the capacitor off and then you just go back and do the desolder wick to clean the contacts on the board and get it ready for the new one. Either way, try it both ways, see which way you prefer. They both do the same thing. Final, you know, The final outcome is the same. Um, basically what you want to do is have nice clean um, open connections to install the new capacitors into. I say both, both of these methods um, will leave you with the nice clean holes to put the new capacitors into. <coughs> so try it either way. See which one you prefer. <coughs> um, as you're removing the capacitors off the board, just install the new capacitors onto the uh, unit. If you notice on this board, where the capacitors come off of, near one of the two holes, there's a small negative symbol. That's the side that the negative lead of the capacitor goes into. And then again on the capacitors, one side has a gray stripe with a negative symbol on it. That's also the negative lead. So when you install it onto the board, you just make sure that the negative lead of the capacitor goes into the hole that's marked negative. Then you hold the capacitors on the board and separate the legs a little bit so that they stay in place like such and then you can come back with your soldering iron and your solder and apply a little bit of solder and then you have the capacitors are now soldered to the board. <coughs> Once you have the capacitor soldered to the board you take your diagonal cutters and just cut off the remaining wire legs to the capacitor that are sticking on the board and now we have two capacitors that are that have been replaced we just need to go through and replace the rest of the capacitors on the board so we'll just do that and try to get that monitor back up and running Three. Four. 
and I'll just use that diesel water like I was talking about and clean up the connections here. So you just want to leave the holes where they're open to install the new capacitor so that the, the leads will slide through easily. Um, while you're doing this repair, you know, of course you do want to make sure that you're using the right capacitors. Um, the capacitors need to be low ESR, which is equivalent series resistance. They also need to be high temperature and high ripple current because this is a switched mode uh, power supply and without using the right capacitors uh, it will cause stress to the power supply and you can blow out additional components uh, if you use the wrong capacitors. Um, on our side of course in the um, choosing the right component section it has um, instructions on you know which capacitor families are the correct ones for this type of repair but um, if you don't want to worry about the hassle of making sure that you get the right ones and having to order them possibly from two or three different suppliers to get the right ones uh, we do have the repair kits available in our parts store that do have the right values and the right sizes um, so that you don't have to worry about it you just pick up the capacitor kit and you know that you're getting the right pieces for the job Okay, now we'll put in the replacement capacitors into these four locations. And the um, instruction guide on our website shows you what the values are. Um, they go into each one of the holes. In each one of the capacitor locations if as you're taking them off you forget which one goes into which location uh, that information is available on our website okay now we solder the next group of capacitors back into place now when you're soldering you do want to make sure that the new solder connection is bright and shiny if it has a kind of a dull look to it, uh, that is what's called a cold solder joint. And if that happens on your solder joints, you need to uh, reheat the joint with your soldering iron, apply a little bit more solder, and it will melt it and should give you a, a good connection. So you do want to make sure that you have a bright and shiny one, you know, bright shiny connection. Um, the dull connections are not good electrical connections and it can cause the circuit to not start up as it should be. Okay, now we've replaced these two and these four capacitors. Now we'll just do the remaining few capacitors on the board um, and take it back over to our uh, monitor and see how we did. So we're just going to go through and replace all of the rest of them. This one wants to be a bit of a booger to get off. It's the, in a tight location, um, right by the power connector. It is a little bit more difficult because you can't really grab a hold of the capacitor to 
wiggle it and remove it you just kind of have to make sure that you get the connections clean and try to remove the capacitor that way ones. that one off. And so now we'll just solder those three back on and then we'll take the board back over to our monitor and see how we did. Clean up a couple of these holes here. And while you're doing this, it does not take very much solder at all to do these connections. Uh, you just want to put the soldering iron on it first. Um, it'll heat up the trace, the little copper part portion on the board, and the capacitor leg. Um, and then once it gets slightly heated up, then you can apply the solder. And then the solder will will smoothly flow and make that connection for you. And now we'll just go back, snip off those legs, and we'll have the second part of the capacitor replaced. These are this is one of the, I guess simpler boards, <clears throat> but unfortunately it does have a lot of capacitors um, on it that need to be replaced. Um, so it, it, it is a little bit
time consuming. I mean, it's fairly easy to do it. It's just a time consuming process um, to do it. Definitely worthwhile on the monitor, though. I mean, it's a decent monitor um, once you get it back going again. Sorry about that. I think I just wiggled the camera. And there we have a fully rebuilt power supply board. Uh, we'll go ahead and take that over back over to the monitor and plug it in and see if we have successfully rebuilt it. So let's take it back over and let's see what we did.